I'm Peter Block at TCT 2018. Patient prosthesis mismatch has been something that's with us uh, ever since the beginning of aortic and mitral valve replacement, but predominantly aortic valve replacement. Uh, is the valve big enough for the patient? With me on my left is Howard Herman, an old friend, colleague, uh, who has looked at the TVT registry and tried to figure out what are the predictors of patient prosthesis mismatch now, not in surgery, but in TAVR. So Howard, why don't you tell me first what you did and then we'll talk about what you found. So we analyzed the TVT registry, which as you know, records all of the US commercial TAVR procedures. And over a two, three year period from 2014 through 2017, there were 62,000 patients who had TAVR with commercial valves in the US in this contemporary time frame. And we analyzed the effective orifice area as reported by the sites, but patient measured continuity equation echo data. So good, not, not manufacturers recommended valve areas, but actual measured data. And we looked at the incidence of PPM in that population. And it turned out to be a fairly high incidence. So 12% of patients had severe PPM and 25% of patients had moderate PPM. So let me just go back for a second to the definition because it's important. We don't use this definition of PPM very much or even of aortic valve area very much, which right. is per meter squared. Exactly. It's the effective orifice area divided by the body surface area. And the definition of severe prosthesis patient mismatch is less than 0.65 centimeters squared per meter squared. The average mean valve area in our study was 1.0 centimeters squared per meter squared. But if you were below 0.65, that was classified as severe. Okay. So tell me what you found. Tell me what the indicators are for bad PPM. So we looked at multivariate logistic regression of more than 35 factors, and what we found is the most, uh, the highest predictors with highest odds ratios of close to three were patients who had valve and valve procedures, although that was only about 6% of the population, and patients who received less than or equal to 23 millimeter diameter labeled prostheses, so small prostheses, and, and that was about 28% of the patients, and it was about 40% in the severe PPM group. And then there were some other patient factors that predicted it, such such as female gender, uh, African American, low ejection fraction, higher BSA, atrial fibrillation, more severe TR and MR. Sort of, sort of the things that you would expect. But I'm curious about the valve and valve business because that's something everybody talks about valve and valve. It's a hot thing, right? right? But the fact of the matter is we should be careful. We should, but again, it was only about 6% of the database that we looked at in the U.S. commercial experience. And then we were able to match almost 40,000 of those patients to their, uh, who are of Medicare age to their CMS outcomes at one year. And we were able to show, look at mortality, quality of life, stroke, and heart failure hospitalization. And was it related to PPM? It was. So patients with severe PPM, although not the patients with moderate PPM, but the patients with severe PPM had a 19% higher risk of dying in one year and a 13% risk, higher risk of heart failure rehospitalization. And really importantly, I think those curves are diverging at one year. So we only have one year outcome so far, so who knows where it will be in, in three or four or five years. You know, no surprise on that either, but a very interesting statistic. So. Uh, for the folks out there doing TAVR and worried about this, large patients, female patients, and so forth, what are the things that you would point out to them? So I think we spend a lot of time in the heart valve team meeting talking about STS scores, annular dimensions, you know, uh, vascular access, but I think we don't talk too much about whether a patient's at risk for severe PPM, and maybe we should. And then if a patient is at severe PPM, that's the first step, awareness of this problem, are there things we can do about it? Do they, are they eligible for a valve that might have a, a, liar, a higher effective orifice area? In some patients, maybe a 23 of one valve can be a 26 in the other valve based on area or perimeter. Some valves have better effective orifice areas than other valves. Um, when we do valve and valve procedures, we can fracture the valve. And I think as we move into lower risk patients and we start thinking about the low risk and younger population, uh, maybe in some of those patients, surgery with a root enlargement procedure might be a better option in order to make sure we don't have PPM in the future. Perfect. So for all those heart valve teams out there, I know you don't think about PPM very much, but it's something to keep in mind. Thanks, Howard. You're welcome.